Hello everyone, welcome back for another book review. So today we are talking about this book, The Witch's Broom, The Craft, Lore, and Magic of Broomsticks by Deborah Blake. So this book is about the same size and kind of has the same vibes as the Llewellyn Sabbath Essentials. It's a relatively small book, they're definitely shorter than your average book, but it does contain a lot of information. So one thing that's really interesting is that pretty much every chapter has a little blurb from a different author in there so you can get some different perspectives. Some people that I read in like reviews didn't love that. Personally, I liked it so that you could see different perspectives about like whatever topic for the brooms was coming up. I really didn't expect this book to be able to cover the topic of brooms that much, but she did. She really talked about brooms every single page. Overall, if you were just starting to think about using a broom in your craft, this is definitely a great resource to have. She talks about pretty much every use that you could use for a broom, some different lore, different traditions, different ways to use them. It's got a lot of good information in there. As per usual, there is a few things that everyone doesn't love, and so one of those things is that this is like super Wicca based. She does put some disclaimers here and there, but for the most part, like the blessings and how to go about dealing with your brooms, it's Wicca. Personally, I do have a lot of Wicca-based things in my practice, so how I cast a circle and stuff like that and create my sacred space, a lot of that does come from my Wiccan background. That's where I started in the craft. But when it comes to blessing it, it's always you're calling on the traditional Wiccan god, the god of the forest, the land, etc. and so forth, and it's the moon goddess and Mother Earth and all of that. Like, it's it's Wicca. It's their variation of the goddess and god. Doesn't really venture into other traditions, which is kind of disappointing. I don't love that the god is just summed up into just a few characteristics, and it you don't really have it for other deities, you know? Like, Thor versus Loki versus Zeus versus Ra, they're all gonna be very different vibes, and there's really nothing about that in this book. The closest is that there was one, and I don't even think it was her, I think it was one of the other authors, had talked about, I think it's Thor's wife actually, with the golden hair, and that it was some kind of connection with the broomstick and like the bristles of a broom, and that it was like a way to bring in prosperity, which I thought was kind of cool, but that was about as far as that went. But if you're Wiccan, like hands down, it's got a lot of great rituals. It walks you through every single step, every single time. So you got that going for you. The other thing, I liked this, but then I also kind of didn't, is that every single spell or ritual required a new broom. And I was kind of hoping for at least some kind of like, if you're gonna use your old broom, here's how to like reset the intentions. But no, it's all new brooms. And as lovely as that is, I don't know any witch that's gonna want like 20 plus brooms in their house. Because you have your cleansing broom, you have an anti-nightmare broom, you have your wedding broom, you have an elemental broom, you have like for each one too, so like five different brooms. You have one for the wheel of the year, you have one for the different moon phases, you have one for the god, one for the goddess. And it's like, that's so many brooms. I don't need that many. How do I keep using the same one over and over? Like, she doesn't really talk about that much. It's like, just get a broom and decorate it with the new things. And it's like, I get it. Like, as a witch who's done this for, like, going on 13 years this September, like, I know how to undo the spells. Like, it's not a problem to me. But I just wish it was a little bit more, like, versatile of, like, you know, remove the items from your previous spell off of your broom, do the cleansing ritual, and then recharge it with the new things. Or set an intention that your broom can be used for whatever you need and go with that. It just was kind of weird that it's like you had to constantly be getting new brooms. Now she's not talking about like this big massive one like I have. She does mean like the little ones that you can get. A lot of new age shops and especially around the holidays so starting pretty soon because Halloween is starting to creep its way into the stores you can get those mini cinnamon ones that are like this big those ones work really well for what I'm thinking you would be using them in these spells for and those would be really easy to decorate and then burn like she has a few of them that you burn afterwards and it's like I could see doing that but it's also just like why can't I just use my broom for everything? <laughs> it's a silly little thing. 
And again, I know that it's very easy to dismantle the things, but it's like I kind of wanted one of like building my relationship with a broom as I'm doing all of these things with it. Because like I would do the same thing with an athame or a wand or like whatever. <laughs> like my other tools, like my pentacle and my cauldron, super universal. I use them for a bunch of stuff. Pentacle, great for charging, also good for casting the circle. It's a charging point, it's a cleansing point. You use it for a bunch of things. You don't have a bunch of pentacles around. Same with your cauldron. Like you have your cauldron. You use it to banish stuff, to mix your herbs sometimes. Sometimes you use it in water spells, sometimes you use it in fire spells. Like it's pretty universal of a use. Sometimes you can even use it as an offering dish. Like you can use it for a variety of things. So like, why does the broom just kind of get locked into this corner and like that's, you know, you just have to keep doing new ones. I don't know. It's a me thing and maybe she explained it better. I will admit that I am sick <laughs> as of reading this book and so I'm not terribly sick but when you're sick you're just kind of like meh. So maybe that's, maybe I misread that somewhere but I've reread it a bunch of times before every spell and it just continuously was like you need a new broom get a broom, use a broom for this, so I don't know. Other than that, this book was really fantastic. Again, I'm very surprised she was able to fit so much information on brooms, <laughs> specifically, and in a lot of ways, I feel like this is the story that, and like the book style that um, Scott Cunningham and David Harrington were kind of leading towards when they did The Magical Household. And as much as I love Scott Cunningham, I think Deborah Blake actually nailed this book so much better than that. <laughs> like, this is what I think they were envisioning. Because she has little snippets of, like, folklore and different little, like, wives' tales and stuff like that throughout. And then also, like, more modern uses and ways to actually incorporate them and use them. So if you are new to using a broom, definitely pick up this book. It's a great resource. And... Even if you have, it's still a good book. It's really easy to read. It just takes an afternoon of sitting down with a good cup of tea and a few hours to kill and you got the book done. Thank you so much for watching. You can support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts, or you can just like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and bless be.